Hi guys, today we are going live with Jared Wolf, head trainer, owner of Wolfpack Canine up in New Hampshire. And him and his Malinois Akuma are actually one of our favorite, favorite teams to follow. We absolutely love their Instagram, all their videos. It is true dog dancing. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and add Jared in. And I just wanna make note that We've had the most questions. So many that I put them on uh, index cards. Hey. What's up? How's it going? Good, how you doing? Good. Thank you for coming on tonight. No problem. So uh, I doing? just want to let you know that you've had the most questions that we've ever had. So oh boy. well done. So a lot of people um, asked about Akuma's incredible drive. Before we get into Akuma's drive, can we talk about your drive and what motivates you? Uh, yeah, just um, obviously uh, running the business, Wolfpack K9, uh, trying to achieve all the goals I have with Akuma. Uh, that, that's what drives me on a daily basis. So getting better as a dog trainer, getting better as a person. Mm -hmm. And how did you get into dog training? I got into dog training. I got a pit bull named the Kuma, excuse me, named Ty. Well, it's about seven years, or six years ago now, I believe. So I got him as a pet um, and didn't know much about working dog stuff. I was getting into dog training and slowly realized he had a lot of drive. He had a lot of courage. He had a lot of attributes for a working dog and it just slowly developed into uh, me getting into PSA. And the kennel I was at where I worked for years was big into PSA. The, uh, the owner, his, name, his name's uh, Steve Roberts. He's one of the, he's the youngest handler to ever get a PSA three. So I just kind of got dragged into that world and the rest is kind of history. Mm -hmm. um, so with Ty, um... Can you talk a little bit about Ty and like as a working dog, you don't really see many pit bulls doing the stuff that Ty would do. Right. Yeah. So that they're more like a unicorn dog. It's like one in a million pit bulls can kind of do this stuff. But uh, yeah, he was super driven. Um, but I made tons of mistakes with him. It was a big learning process for me. At that point in time, I was really into bite work. I wasn't as much into obedience because it was just exciting to see him get out there and work. So once I tried to reel him back in for obedience, I had a lot of problems. I couldn't get him to do obedience around a decoy. I couldn't get any engagement. He wouldn't even look at me, basically. I was begging for his attention. So a lot of the, uh, the mistakes I made with him and trying to figure out how to get him to actually engage with me around a decoy or distractions is what's led to, you know, how good Akuma is looking at this point in time. Mm-hmm. If if um if Ty wasn't engaging with you or uh, didn't want to have anything to do with you, how did you get him to <clears throat> do the things he did? Okay, so at that point, I had to do no bite work for several months. So he didn't do any bite work whatsoever for, there was like a four month span, I believe, where I didn't give him any bites. And the only fun he was going to have was with me. So it took... It took a long time for him to even, you know, realize we're going to be doing obedience and play was going to be with me instead of the decoy. So it was a slow, it was a slow learning process, very frustrating, but I learned a lot from that dog. Mm -hmm. How uh, different is it for you training Akuma versus Ty? It's, I mean, they're, they're very different breeds, their personalities. Um, you know, Mal's learned a lot faster rate. So it's almost it can be difficult too with the mal because they learn at such a fast rate that they almost get ahead of you with their pattern learning. So uh, the pit bull is definitely the marathon as far as teaching them different things because they're so stubborn, they're selfish, they want to do things their way. But um, yeah, it's, it's just a very different breed to deal with, you know. And what do you prefer, the stubborn um, pit bull energy or the mal eager to learn and do? Uh, I like a little, I, I like, cha I like the challenge of Ty, you know, 
he was he was a big challenge for me. So I was trying to show that pit bulls could actually do this stuff, and they they could you know they could title these we could title these dogs in a, a sport that's basically run by Malinois and Dutch Shepherds. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of like a chip on my shoulder when I had him at that point in time. But having the Malinois has been has been a lot of fun. So I, I like them both. I'm probably gonna get another pit bull at some point to do PSA with down the road. Oh, we'll look forward to seeing you in that little pity. So, um, okay, I have a question from uh, a Bougere. When are you starting your MMA career versus Logan Paul? <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm too old. I'm too old for that stuff. I don't even, I don't really um, train anymore. I went when I went to uh, John Jones. I trained with him a little bit. I pulled my hamstring throwing kicks. Uh, so that ain't happening. <laughs> so how has your experience um, as kickboxing influenced your experience as a dog Does Do the two align? As a, as a dog handler? There's yeah. actually just even like footwork and things like that. There's a lot of things that I, I took from kickboxing. And even back like when I grew up playing basketball, like footwork stuff and dog handling. Like you say, me and Akuma dance together. Because there's a lot of like footwork drills I do with them to make sure we're very in sync and our cadence is on point. So the footwork stuff is huge with the kickboxing and any kind of sport like that. I do feel like it crosses over to dog handling for sure. Mm -hmm. um, what is the most rewarding part of um, dog handling for you? Uh, the most rewarding part of dog handling is it's just, it's a form of therapy. You know, it's like you're just you and your dog doing your thing. Nothing else matters at that point in time. That's the most rewarding part for me when me and him are just clicking at at 100 and everything's kind of making sense at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Well, you can definitely tell in the videos. Um, I, I mean, the videos are very inspirational and, and very um, fun to watch. Um, on days where you feel like you don't really have it in you, um, what inspires you to um, get out there with the coma? I, I, owe, I owe it to him to work him every day. We work, we do something every day on a daily basis. Mm -hmm whether it's just like a little bit of exercise or we'll play chuck it, whatever the case is. If you own a Belgian Malinois, you go to that dog to get him out there and, and do your thing. Because mm -hmm. if anyone's ever had one that's sitting around for a little bit, it's not fun. Yeah. Being with all that energy. Yeah. Um, okay. What's it like being such a badass decoy trainer person? <laughs> <So nice. laughs> uh, decoy, decoy is a lot of fun. Um, I try and be like balanced with decoying and handling as much as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time I ever got took a bite was from this dog named Fosco, and I wasn't so bad at that time. I, at that time, I took the suit off so fast. I was like, I'm good. I don't want anything to do with this. So I sat around and watched for a while and just kind of tried to soak in some knowledge from the guys that are around me. Because if you have the mindset where you're going to just take a bite from a dog versus you're going to actually work the dog, it's kind of scary, right? So mm -hmm. a couple of months later, I started learning how to decoy. Okay, very cool. Um, who is, um, wait, who and which dog has bitten you the hardest while decoying in PSA? In PSA, in training or in trial? Um, both. Uh, the hardest biting tra uh, training dogs is my, my dog's father, Ryu. Kuma's father, Ryu, he's owned by Jeff Riccio. Uh, he's a PSA one. He's a PSA one dog and probably Kano. Kano who's owned by Josh Knowlton. He's a, uh, he's a PSA two. He's, he's in the threes right now, but those are probably two of the hardest biting dogs I've had on me. And actually, actually John Jones's dog bites really hard. He's up there as well. He, he made me go get my gauntlet. So he's a hard biting dog. Nice. Okay, Twisted Blonde Canine, any advice to new decoys? Uh, new decoys, you got to get a mentor. It's the biggest thing. Because if you get out there and think you know what you're doing, or you get ahead of yourself and you think, you know, you can build the dog, but you know what you're doing, you're going to mess the dog up. So I still even yield to my to the guy I look to and go, hey, you know what we're doing with this dog? You know, what we, which way are we headed with this? You got to, you know, stay in your lane and just – get mentored, keep getting better and better and better, get guys around you that are really good and you're gonna soak up that knowledge. 
Natalie Jacom, what do you and Akuma do in your downtime? And our downtime? Ah, uh, he just hangs around. He's he's also my pet, so he's not just kenneled all the time. He's hanging mm -hmm. around the couch, you know, just chilling or on his dog bed. We go on hikes, we go on we go on long walks, like all that kind of stuff. Lots of hiking when it's mm -hmm. nice enough, but we got a bunch of snow on the ground right now. Nice. Yeah, somebody also asked, um, does Akuma uh does he hang out uh in the kennel or um or no he's like a home, home dog he's hanging out nice um and what role does um like for you as a handler uh <clears throat> what role does affection play with him as far as like earned affection that kind of stuff yeah like yeah, if he's a I mean, pet I, dog, I, yeah yeah i try not to baby him too much but mm -hmm. it's kind of sometimes it's tough not to you give your dogs a little bit of love but yeah, it's it's still a lot of structure involved. He's on he's on place a lot, hanging out. Otherwise, he's getting this, into some mischief. So, but he's okay. a he's a very affectionate he's a very affectionate dog. So if I give him too much, he'll start trying to take advantage of it. He'll mm -hmm. start jumping on me. He'll start trying to make me pet him and things like that. So I can't give him too much. He gets a little too greedy. Mm -hmm. Malinois things. Yep. Okay. Kaleidoscope 81. Do you think observation or practice is more important, effective? Well, that, that kind of goes back to what I was talking about the decoy stuff. Cause I took a step back for a little bit and just observed. I'm a visual learner, so I can, I can learn things by watching. So I think it's very important to step back, kind of take a look at what you're getting into before you just, you know, get out there and do it. That's just for me. That's all I meant for everyone. Um, how do you get Akuma to heal like that and his head position? Reps. <laughs> tons, tons of reps. Tons of reps. Mm -hmm. The biggest mistake I'd say people probably do is they, they ask for too much too soon. So mm -hmm. you got to take it very, very slow. I mean, we did so many reps when he's a puppy over and over and over again that the head position is very crystal clear where you're supposed to be in that heel position. So, mm -hmm. and then once pressure gets, you know, brought into the situation, decoys and things like that, it kind of starts going downhill a little bit. So tons of reps around decoy back to foundation type style work, you know, mm -hmm. it's a very slow process. Um, Go ahead, uh, sorry. N no, 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 you're fine. Um, someone's asking um, what's PSA? <laughs> um, Google protection. It. <laughs> yeah, Google it. Yeah, uh, it's Protection Sports Association. It's a it's a working dog sport. And um, uh, when you how did you how did you get into PSA? I know. Uh, like I was saying earlier, uh, that the kind of was that there was a bunch of bunch of PSA trainers there. Um, how do you phase out a, the treat? Um, how do you phase out treats when you're training? Okay um you like lure fading mm -hmm. uh it's it's hard to just to explain it's it's more like a feel do you know what i mean you gotta have a mm -hmm. feel for it. you gotta know where your dog's at and what he understands where to have the treat because there's very there's a bunch of different phases to it i can't explain that briefly you know so just phasing you know fading from the food to the toy and all those little things it's it's a lot of little detailed moves you're making. So it's hard to describe without kind of showing per someone in person. Mm -hmm. are, when you are doing the videos, do you have someone else filming you? Yeah, yeah, I Always. Do. Whoever's available. And, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Their job. And with Akuma, um, were you going back and watching the videos to see how Akuma was doing or like but where my own videos position. yeah i do i watch all i watch mm -hmm. my videos all the time as far as like mm -hmm. the raw uncut videos to see what i'm see what i'm doing wrong see if he's out of position you know his speed mm -hmm. foot my footwork all that little detailed stuff that's going to make me a better handler mm -hmm. but you got to critique mm -hmm. yourself and go okay i sucked that sucked that wasn't so clean that was my error that was his error all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and with um, when you're looking back at the footage, um, what has been the um, biggest challenge for you with Akuma, either in obedience or um, with sports? 
as, as far as, well, we, we've only trialed one time. We're kind of climbing the ladder right Sorry, now. I think. Do you lose me? Uh -huh. Okay, so we're, we're kind of climbing the ladder okay. right now. So we've only uh, yeah, trialed it's kind one of time. Cutting you, give, me, give me one second. Mm -hmm. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, good. Okay, so what is, um, what's your end goal with the Kuma? What's my, wait, where am I headed? Yes. I want to get, I mean, I want to get a PSA 3. That's, mm -hmm. that's the goal. It's going to take a long time, a lot of hard work to get there, but I mean, that's the end goal for me. Mm -hmm. get, get a PSA 3, try and compete at a high level. I know. Mm -hmm. What were some of the issues that you um, struggled with with the Kuma during your earlier training? Uh, when he was younger, he would resource guard toys. Like he would literally turn around and try and bite me aggressively if there was mm -hmm. a toy in front of him. So he was kind of a dick when he was younger. So one of the things I didn't, I had to stop doing with him. I don't know if you're familiar with like a choke off method, choke off the toy or the sleeve and protection work, I couldn't do much of that because it would cause a lot of conflict between the two of us. Mm -hmm. So I would bring food into the situation because he was very food driven and try and mm -hmm. make him understand we're on the same side. So that was one thing I had to deal with. And it's, it's gone away as he's got older. Mm -hmm. Bastion Bain, roughly how long do you estimate it would take to get to PSA 3? Um, that's a very, that's a tough question. It, it's a very, there's only like, I think it's like 24 dogs have a PSA three at this point in time. So it could, this, this dog's that took 10 years to get there, I believe. So it's tough. I, I may never get there. You know, it's, it's, it's one of those open-ended questions. Mm -hmm. He could be um, eight or nine years old by the time we get that, get to that point. Hopefully not, mm -hmm. but you know, it's a very, very difficult sport. Would you be okay with that if it did take nine or 10 years? Yeah. I love training all the time. So mm -hmm. just, just getting out there with my, with my training partners and whatnot, you know, it's a, it's a sense of joy. So if we never get there, I'm, I'll, I'll be happy with them. I'm not worried about that, but it's just a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. Okay. My mutts are better. When is your PSA one trial date? Not sure yet. I don't know yet. Okay. Um, uh, I think so I might you... I might do Jersey Devil because I'm decoying that trial, but still up in there. We'll see. We'll see mm -hmm. how he's doing in training. Mm -hmm. What is a typical day like for you? <laughs> a typical day. Uh, I go in. I go in the shop. Usually I have evals in the morning. Um, we got camp dogs. We got board and trains we're working with. I'm training with my. I train my staff a couple of times throughout the week. So it's pretty much nonstop all day long, just dog training all day. And nice. I come home and do things like this. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <laughs> um, what made you want to get in the bite suit and become a decoy? Well, it was kind of like a rite of passage where I used to work. I had to get bit. I had to get some, I had to get some hazing done, which I do with my employees now. I stick them all in the bite suit to get bit by a kuma. <laughs> but yes. uh, it, it kind of had a martial arts feel to it. Honestly, in my opinion, it's kind of like, I, I call it like the dog ninja because it has this mm -hmm. martial arts kind of aspect. And I, I was leaving martial arts. I wasn't, I was kind of fading that part of my life out. And then I found decoying. So it's just another outlet for me. I like to be competitive. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of how, how my personality is. Mm -hmm. And um, can you kind of explain like the technical parts of being a decoy? and like how that would be kind of similar to martial arts? Uh, just like the footwork involved, you know, you're kind of in a sparring match with the dog. It's you versus the dog. Even though when you're decoying and training, the dog's always gonna win. And trial, obviously you're trying to test the dog and run the dog off the field. So there's a lot of like you versus the dog going on. But again, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the gym and you're training with your buddies, you guys are trying to make each other better. When you go to the fight or the trial, you're trying to win. So it has a lot of similarities for me in that, in that aspect. 
And there's a lot of martial arts people in general that do decoy. So I think it's across the board, a lot of guys feel like that and girls. Mm -hmm. um, when you're uh, decoying, do you ever get scared of certain dogs? No, not for, not for quite a while. I mean, there's some dogs where I'm like, oh, this is going to suck kind of. Mm -hmm. This is going to suck a little bit. So, but the, there's a little anxiety at trial when you're kind of, when you're hanging out, waiting to come out and try and test the dog. There's definitely some anxiety there, but in training, it's, it's all fun for me. Um, how uh, hard is it on your body when you get bit by the dog? Um, honestly, I don't really bruise much anymore like I used to. My body's kind of used to that kind of aspect of it. I really don't get bruised up. And I used to get like welts all of my arms, all of my legs. My legs still bruise a little bit because PSA is more of an upper body. My arm doesn't, doesn't really get affected much anymore. But the toll it takes on your shoulder and your back and things like that, your knees, yeah, you get a little, you get a little banged up. Yikes, you have to love it. Definitely. Okay, um, what helped you progress as a decoy? Twisted one, okay, fine. Um, like I said before, just being around people that are better than you. Okay. Try. If you're the best guy in the room, you're not getting any better. So you got to be around people that you're looking to. Hey, you know, am I, am I messing this up? What can I do better in this situation? You know, even filming yourself saying, oh, I dropped my arm too quick. That was an issue I used to have. I used to drop my arm a lot. You know, things like that. Like, I need to get better at this. So always keep improving. Never think you're like, oh, I'm, I'm at the top now. No, you got to keep getting better. Absolutely. Okay, Obi-Wan De Niro, what's the most unique dog you have seen with a PSA besides a pity? That's a nice, uh, I like that username. What was it, Obi-Wan what? <laughs> Obi-Wan De Niro. Obi-Wan De Niro. I've seen a Border Collie training in PSA. I don't know if they titled that dog or not. I've seen a Boxer. There's a can there's a can Corso with a PSA three, so that's pretty that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, is that Oscar more, what's that? Uh, is that Oscar Morris dog? No, no, it's uh, Ty Nero. Uh -huh. As the as the Corso. Yeah. Um, but besides that, I mean, there might be a Doberman or two out there. There's a rod. There's a. I don't even know if there's a Roddy with a PSA one. Honestly, someone might have to correct me on that. But it's mostly, the, I mean, the sport's dominated by Malinois, Dutch Shepherds. So even like, there's, there's not really a lot of German Shepherds out there that have, mm -hmm. that are competing at a high level. I think there's one PSA 3 German Shepherd, I believe. So anything besides a Malin or Dutchie, if you're doing well, you're doing something, you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider going into another sport, like a ring sport? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty open-minded, but I mean, for right now, I'm, I'm focused on PSA, but yeah, I mean, I, I respect ring sport is, is awesome. I love, I watch videos of ring sport all the time, so mm -hmm. I would definitely consider it, but as far as where I'm located and things like that, it's, it's, it's heavy PSA around here. That's how I got involved in this sport. If I had been somewhere else and ring sport was a sport, I probably would have gotten to that, you know? Mm-hmm. For um, with Wolfpack Canine, um, if you're training dogs um, every day, are, are the dogs that you train um, pet dogs? Yep, or pet, are dogs. They mostly? pet dogs, 99.9%. Okay. Um, I got this, I have a little Dutchie puppy that's sticking with me for a little bit. I'm doing, I'm doing like PSA foundation on um, mm -hmm. just competition style obedience and like puppy, puppy bite work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for the most part, it's a lot of like just working with families and their dogs. Nice. And how do you delegate your time between um, like putting in the work with the Kuma for protection sports and then um, and like train and then doing your job? Um, so even so I was out last night training at my buddy Josh and Alyssa's and I was there till two in the morning training. So we yeah. trained from we trained from I got there at like 7 p.m. till 2 in the morning. Got up, did my did my thing today. So if you want it bad enough, you're going to make the time for it, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, apologies. Uh, is, that, um, is that little Dutch puppy your new prospect? No, no, Are that's not. Uh, no, that's a client dog. That's a client dog. Um, I think it was, it was bred by Hans Peg. Hans Peggy, excuse me. 
It's a, he's a nice little dog. I, I like him a lot, but he's not mine. I wish he was. I kind of like him. <laughs> 313 Gypsy, any tips, advice for first time sport handlers? Uh, I'd fi find a club. It's, it's a lot of the same stuff I'm saying. Like, you got to get around people that know what they're doing. If you're winging it, you're probably going to be like way behind by the time the dog's, you know, old enough to, to start competing. So find a group of people that are motivated, open minded, that know the sport, and you'll be good to go. Awesome. Who has been your biggest influence slash mentor? Uh, Josh Knowlton is my biggest influence. And he's still my mentor at this point in time, I'd say. So he's, he's had a huge impact on me. Even back, because he's, he's also a pit bull guy as well. He had a pit bull first and got a her. He, he put a PSA one on the, uh, he put a PSA one on like a shelter pit bull, which is pretty impressive. So just being around him and watching him with his, uh, his duchy. Now I got my Mao bouncing ideas off each other. That's, uh, that's my biggest inspiration as far as like, you know, competition training goes. Mm -hmm. um, and oh, do you, how often do you talk to him or do you? I'm sorry, say again? How often do you talk to him or do you? Like, what would he say to you now? Like, from, oh, I'm, with, I'm with him all the time. Okay. I'm with him all the time. I'm bringing him out to train with John Jones this weekend. Ah, very nice. Yeah, we, should, we I was with him last night training. Awesome. So, um, how okay? How many markers do you have for Akuma? Is it something you are working on? How many markers do I have? I have, yeah. as far as like positive reinforcement markers, I use Clicker for a food reward. I use Yes for a total reward. And okay. all his foundation was built on, on the that. Uh, mostly food, but I slowly brought the toy in. But those two markers were the. Mm -hmm. were the originators of that focus heel and everything like that. Um, what's the hardest part of what you do? Uh, just find the time. Just find the time to to get everything in and just you can find the time to relax sometimes. It's mm -hmm. just like go, go, go. Right. Yeah, it's exhausting. Um, when you are with... Um, with your mentor and with other people, um, how critical is it for um, for you to get feedback on how you're doing with Akuma? Yeah, I always, after my sessions, I always go like, oh, I'll either like start talking shit about my dog or <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's, I always have the joke. All right, he's going on Craigslist if he has a bad night <laughs> or whatever. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm like, you know, what, I, I'll be doing like a session or whatever. And then after I'll go, you know, what do I need to work on? Like, what, what's, what do I suck at right now? So I definitely mm -hmm. look for that feedback every time out pretty much. Mm -hmm. But even, I mean, he, he, he'll do the same thing with me. Like we try and give each other ideas mm -hmm. or like, Hey, you know, you should try this out. Kind of, this is, she's kind of, or he's kind of having an issue with this, you know, try this. So having that two way door is good, you know? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's see. Oh, question, can you do the dance challenge? <laughs> no, no, not doing that again. <laughs> well, that was good, nice job. My sister made fun of me. I got, everyone was calling me stiff. <laughs> Honestly, when I put up the poll, I started getting nervous because a lot of people were was, voting for you. I was beating you for a little while there. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, if he freaking wins, like that's just embarrassing. <laughs> It, it would have been it would have been embarrassing. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a good look. Luckily, I'm in the lead. I I have to check. My whole out. staff watched me do it and filmed it. It was awful. <laughs> uh, was it awful? It wasn't so awful. Um, okay. Do you prefer male over female dogs? If so, why? Yeah, I like I like male dogs better. Why? I don't I don't want I don't want to deal with the heat and all that stuff, and they get. You know, they get a little funky sometimes, fear periods, all that kind of stuff. I had a female shepherd a couple of, a couple of years back. I basically, I had her for like a year, and then she got rehomed. She's in a good home now. I still see her. But I watched mm -hmm. that dog go through like these ups and downs with her personality. I was just like, all right, I've had enough of this. So <laughs> male, male dog for me. <laughs> no, no, it did. Um, did you grow up with dogs? Yeah, I grew up. I grew up with uh, pit bulls. 
Oh. Been, been around pits forever. I have a black and white photo of my great grandfather with a pitbull. So legacy. Kind of, kind of in my family's kind of you know DNA. My dad's got one. My mom's got one. My sister's got a bully. So Very nice. I'll get I'll get another one soon. I yeah, switched to the dark I, side for a little bit. All the pit bull people out there are mad at me. <laughs> well, it will come. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, when you're making uh, the videos, um, what are you, um, what is your goal? Like, are you, think, do you, are you trying to inspire people? Because you definitely do inspire people. Did, do you know that? I'm just having, I'm just having fun, honestly. I'm just having fun. Yeah. But okay. yeah, I mean the video, yeah, sometimes it's like I'm motivating myself and so, like the music I choose and things like that. I'm almost talking mm -hmm. to myself, trying to pump myself up, you know? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a marathon trying to get, you know, get to the top. This, these kind of sports are very, very difficult. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a little bit of self-motivation, kind of talking to myself a little bit. But yeah, I feel like I try and make them entertaining as, as I can. And just like mm -hmm. showing the glimpses of the sport I'm, I'm training in. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of um, people in the dog world, I mean, f for me, Rika has, is a huge source of um, just happiness and she brings me so much joy. I love training with her right. um, and has uh, like helped me, uh, like especially through COVID and like mental health and all of that. Um, how has um, Akuma been a source of like therapy for you? Yeah, without a doubt. I feel the same way. And I, when, after I lost my other dog, I was really conflicted about getting a dog for a while because I wasn't sure I could get that same that same bond going. Mm -hmm. That same bond going to have my dog Ty. So I almost didn't get him. I had a friend of mine basically convince me, like, hey, you need to get, you need to jump on this litter. These dogs are gonna be great. And I was kind of like, eh, you know, I wasn't really into it at first, but you know, it's, it's been been the biggest blessing for me because. He's, uh, he's helped me out of a dark time, so. Good. Um, how long was it from, <clears throat> how long did you wait before getting Akuma? Um, it was pretty quick. It was only a few months, actually. The, the reading that was happening, the Sybil, the Sybil Ryu, um, I was already kind of considering getting one of those dogs. And then the whole thing happened with Ty, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I even want a dog right now. So, but I end up, end up going through with it. Mm -hmm. I got this pain in my ass right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, and you're freezing up for a sec. You're frozen um, on me. Um, Hold on a sec. There we go. That's better. Sorry. All good. But yeah, so um, it, he, I wasn't planning on getting them, and it just, it all makes sense at this point in time that it just came at the right time, you know? Mm -hmm. do, do you feel um, comfortable sharing a, a little bit about um, Ty? And I, I obviously know, um, having followed you and talked to you, um, for, for other people that might not know you, do you feel comfortable sharing? It's, it's on you. What do you mean, like the situation and everything? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so he, I, I had planned a, t a trip to go away for the weekend, and a friend of mine was going to uh, baby babysit Ty for the weekend, and the, uh, they had an electrical fire at the house when nobody was home. So him and th two other dogs were lost, lost in the fire. So it was, it was a sudden situation. So it was pretty tough. Mm -hmm. I. I I'm so sorry that that happened and thank you for sharing that because I, I really do think that, I mean, like hard times like build, build character and I, I, Ty has obviously inspired you in so many different parts of your life. Um, Definitely. No, yeah. it's hard. Honestly, it's hard to talk about. It really is. Cause I, I'm not going to get the words out <laughs> if we keep going, you know? It, Yes, definitely, and that's why I'm not, I'm not um, 
pressing you. I just, I really commend you for having that resilience and using that, the shitty times, like awful situations to really motivate you. So. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, that sh you kind of took a swerve there. <laughs> you good? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Usa. I'm gonna drink the rest of this real quick. <laughs> no, it was it was it was a really it was a really hard time in my life. So, but I'm lucky I got Akuma. He helped me climb out of that hole. I was in honestly. So, gotta awesome. keep moving forward. That's all I can do. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay, Bastion Bain just asked a question. How do guests at your home interact with Akuma? Um, he's pretty, honestly, he's very, very well behaved, you know, when people come over. He doesn't jump up on people and things like that. So I kind of let him roam. He's, he's fine to come out and greet people. He has a say hi command. So if I want, I can, I can put him in a heel or something like that. And then mm -hmm. say, you know, say hi. And he goes over and just kind of looks for a little belly rub or a back scratch. So it's he's very well behaved that stuff. He doesn't even bark when people come in the house. He doesn't even care. Mm -hmm. He's not much of a protection dog. Mm -hmm. um, you also, do you have a hug command? Because I see in the videos, he kind of jumps up on, onto you. Oh, yeah, the hug situation. So that was just, so I, he he's kind of allowed to jump on me, which, you know, shouldn't be a thing with dogs, a dog trainer, but the thing is, I nurtured a lot of like him hugging me and wrapping me up when we do when we do play with toys. So I let him kind of get away with it. But if he does jump up, he's very polite. He'll go up and just kind of wrap his arms around your uh, waist and just kind of hang out there. Mm -hmm. So he's a he's a polite jump rubber. <laughs> I like that. I don't know if I'll teach Rika how to do that, but uh... <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's like if he was launching up at people, I would have stopped it, but. Mm -hmm. He's a, uh, he's a polite, polite jumper. He just goes up for the hug. Very nice. What is your favorite? Do you have a favorite trick that you do with, um, with Akuma? Um, I haven't, I don't, he doesn't do much like pet tricks. I'm going to teach him how to play dead when I have a minute. Cause I think this is just funny, but the orbit is a lot of fun. I have fun with that. Mm -hmm. He's pretty, he's pretty good at it. So that helps. Yeah. He is. Uh, when you teach the play dead, we might have to do a play we'll do a dead challenge. challenge. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that that's the next goal, play dead. Uh, yeah, so get that going. We got a lot of people have a lot of love for you. I don't know if you're looking at the comments, but uh, I, my phone's like frozen. I can't see any. All right, oh, I'll, I'll just All right. no no. K9 Gunner Tactical, my favorite trainer, Jared, hands down one of the best in the game. Love you, bud. Inspiration, J Will, a real inspiration. Um, That's my boy. Awesome. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to go through maybe five of these. Okay. Uh, do you need a position box when you're training the orbit? Uh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Okay. I, I, the best way to do it is like, like I told you with the two hand, the two hand uh, lure, that's the easiest way. It helps if your dog knows how to walk backwards already. So if your dog knows how to walk backwards, it's going to be learned a lot quicker. Okay. Um, going off of that, someone said, my dog doesn't know that they have a butt. How do I teach the dog to walk backwards or move her butt? Calculate like, that. As in like, Backwards or moving in a circle? Um, I'm not sure, but I think probably just like healing or yeah, the, the dogs. Just so the rear, rear end awareness, a lot, bull work can help with that. Put the dog's two front paws in the bowl and teach them how to maneuver around. Um, and Ryan Donald, how do you teach to walk backwards? Um, you can, same thing. You can use a lure, push the dog back. When he starts walking backwards, click reward. But do a few steps at a time. Don't, you know, don't get greedy and think the dog's just going to walk 20 feet backwards. You got to start slow. All these okay. new behaviors, you just got to do them very slow. Get a little bit and build off of it. 
Okay, your views and experience between Herm Springer Tech Prong and normal Herm Springer Prong. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? You're breaking up just a little bit. Oh, well, what are your views or experience with um, Herm Springer Tech Prong and normal Herm Springer Prong? I'm not sure which one the Tech Prong is, honestly. Maybe, I think he's talking about an e-collar. <laughs> or actually, I have no idea. Well, we'll... Yeah, the Tech Prong, is that like, is a variation of the Herm Springer? I use the basic, just everyday hammer springer, and that's, that's the one I like. Um, okay. Uh, Akiki the Mali, how did you train Akuma's incredible drive? Genetics. That's not, of, of course, I'm nurturing that stuff, but genetics, you got to get the right dog that's going to be able to do these things. If he mm -hmm. didn't have those genetics, he wouldn't be working the way he works. He's very motivated on his mm -hmm. own. So I got to hone into that and, mm -hmm. and channel those drives the way I need them. But mm -hmm. got to get the right dog as the right genetics. Mm -hmm. it, um, it's interesting to hear you say that because having had um, a pity do PSA, you know, because a pity wouldn't be bred to do PSA. Yeah, he's a unicorn. <laughs> yeah. Right. He was a unicorn right. dog. That was like just, you know, lightning struck and he just had what it took, you know, that, that's all. He had the drive, he had the, he had the courage, he had the nerves, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. he had a green handler, so that was the issue there. If I knew what I, you know, if I had him now, it would have been a different road, but. Mm -hmm. How does the handler, yeah. um, how can the handler um, make a dog better? Like what role does um, the handler play? What role is a handle play? Uh, you're, I mean, yeah. you're his teacher. You're his teacher. You gotta show him all these different pictures that he's gonna see eventually in a trial, and you gotta mm -hmm. show him appropriately. So if you give him too much of it, or you show him the same picture over and over again, he's getting ahead of you. There's, you know, there's a lot of variables going on there. Mm -hmm. So you gotta teach him and, and guide him through all these situations, and motivate him, obviously. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think um, uh, there. Don't be a rouge is is talking about the neck tech prong, but we skipped your um, question, so we're, I'm going to go to the next. Um, how do you set start the foundation work for healing? Um, the foundation work for heal. I just start off static heal, put the dog right next to you, and just reward that a lot, and go from there. So. I think like the, I mean, the, the movement stuff I would do with Akuma when he's younger, moving him through my leg and all around me and stuff. It was more about him just moving around me. It didn't have anything to do with the way he was healing with me or anything. So you got to establish that position first before you can start moving. Okay. Um, any tips to speed up ret response <clears throat> time for commands, Kazi the doggo? Um, so you look, so, so for speed, yeah. So you can use a combination of positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement together. Like e collar and then food reward at the end or a toy reward at the end. So you're putting pressure on the dog to get there. When he gets there, he's getting rewarded. So that's going to cause everything to speed up for you. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, out of 10 sessions, how many bad ones do you have? Don't be a rouge. I. Uh, uh, well, we had, like last week, we had a really bad night. I think he was just too pent up. He had a lot of energy. And he was getting leaky in obedience, which he never does. So, but I mean, he's, I'm not to say he's like always doing good, but most of the time I'm pretty happy. You know, I'm not like upset about anything. If mistakes are made, it's because I'm showing him something the wrong way. And I got to go back and go, all right, you know what? This isn't his fault. I'm expecting too much too early, I got to reel it back and show them a little piece of that picture. So it's most of the time, it's my <laughs> game plan or my preparation that's kind of, kind of fucking them up. Excuse me. Um, Becca Turin, um, how and when do you know a dog fully understands a command? Um, if, if, you, if you're giving the dog the verbal command and they're doing it without, you need, without a lure, 
or without pressure, you know the command. So once the once the verbal is crystal clear, you know the, the dog knows what's up. Mm -hmm. So we're having a problem where I feel like I've, I've taught um, Rika a bunch of different things, um, and it's not really like kind of like teaching her a bunch of things with no goal in mind because we aren't doing a sport right, right. right now. Um, like, okay, with the orbit, for example, now she's just orbiting all the time. Yeah. Um, we, uh, now I'm just doing heel with her and, and right. place and come back to the heel. Um, but, and, and like maybe like five months ago, she, she was really good at like Mite in the middle, um, heel on the side. Uh, what should I do with her? Like, should I, um, stop teaching her so many things and like just go back at it like one at a time and make sure she has everything down pat and then add to it yeah i mean you, you got to really establish what the goal is but like her doing the orbiting she's offering that behavior like it's like a dog giving you a paw she knows mm -hmm. she was getting paid after she's doing she's doing that behavior so she's trying to go hey if i do this what do i get out of this you know what i mean so you got to figure out what the goal is. I mean, whenever, and even my dog's done that. He's tried to, you know, orbit on me before I, before I told him to. So normally when he does that, I won't, I won't do it for like a couple of weeks. I'll put it in the back burner. I'll start doing tons of healing. Like when I'm getting close to the trial, I don't do like all this backing up healing and orbit and all that kind of stuff. I, I cut all that crap out and just focus on like technical healing, you know, turns, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you just got to come up with a little game plan as far as where the, where the end goal is. Okay. Thank you. Advice to build engagement with the handler. Um, as far as young dogs, the, I'd say biggest thing people make is a mistake. They let the dog run around free off a leash and then they're getting interested in the leaf blowing by and, you know, obviously with stuff like Malinois, you know, they they got a really good nose. So if I let Akuma just do whatever he wants, he's probably going to be sniffing the dirt over there. Mm -hmm. So keep the dog on the leash. Keep the sessions really short. You know, get get the most out of the session. Put the dog away and build off of that slowly. Okay. Um, what's the longest Akuma has stayed in the focus heel non-competition, but just for fun? I, I, I could heal him for a hundred yards if I want. I mean, I don't know. I haven't tried it, but he'll, he'll stay in that position for as, as long as I want. Nice job. Um, <laughs> do you put any product in your beer? <laughs> uh, no, nope, not anymore. I used to, when I first was growing it out, I used to use beard oil and all that stuff, but it's kind of gimmicky. I just condition it a couple of times a week. Very nice. Um, how many com commands to focus on at once? When, hmm. when you're building the puppy up? Yeah. I'm assuming they're showing. Um, I mean, I, I would break it up. You know, if you're doing like positions, do positions. If you're doing healing, do healing. Then once the dogs understand these different, these different things, you can put them all together. So uh, I keep it, keep it in certain boxes when they're younger. Okay. Um, what do you think about dogs being used to sniff out COVID positive guests at Miami Heat games? <laughs> Is that a I, thing? I don't, know. I don't know. I don't know anything about that, but probably, probably some uh, snake oil salesman sold those dogs to them. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> that is wild. Okay, um, uh, let's see. Um, how do you avoid a collar smart dog while using the collar? Is it worth using the finger click? Yeah, I got the finger tab. So I like it, the finger trainer. I like it, I don't want the dog to see the remote thinking like that's why, you know, I have a little more control over him. But as far as trial goes, you gotta be sneaky about when you're taking the collar off and things like that. And I think if you trial too often and with a younger dog, 
he figures out you can't can't really control him too well, he'll start to figure out once the e call is off, he can do whatever he wants. So you just gotta game plan that ahead of time. Like my dog, I tried to pop it off and we were playing I was playing ball with him. I popped it off when he wasn't looking. Mm -hmm. So that's a tough one. That's tough. Because even dogs at the higher levels figure that stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, what? Uh, okay, a lot of the, the rest of the questions are really technical ones, like how to teach the dog to go in between your legs and, you know, all, yeah. all of that stuff. So um, I'm not going to ask those questions. Um, this is a personal question. Uh, what has... Uh, what is your um what's the best part about um your job <laughs> i don't know if i asked you that the best part of my job um i yeah. honestly just working with the i love dogs obviously so working with the dogs getting to work with all these different unique breeds is a lot of fun like when, whenever there's a unique breed that walks in the building i like to take a picture with it and go look at this guy like the uh the tibetan mastiff that came through the other day but the the best part is helping the families out and helping them understand how to how to control their dog because a lot of them come in they're just like lost like this dog's driving me crazy i'm not sure i can keep it you know it's too much for me and then once they kind of have that like aha moment once the dog's walking nice in the leash they're going oh he's doing great like i have so many clients that i can see they're just like fed up with the puppy and then the dog's finally eight months old got some training it's it's a good feeling awesome um and what's the hardest part about your job uh, well dealing with, i mean that's a good part but but dealing with some clients that are very hard to please and deal with that can be that can be pretty troublesome so but we work through it but that's probably the toughest part when you have a client that's like impossible to please Mm -hmm. The dogs are never the problem. It's always, you know, the humans involved in the situation. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, okay, so we're like, we're just getting to an hour now. And I appreciate you uh, taking the time to talk to me and answer all these questions. No problem. Is there anything um, that you want to share? Or, yeah, is there anything you want to share? Um put me on the spot. No, just watch out for me and Akuma in 2021. And that's about it. You know, check out my Instagram, check out Wolfpack and I'll see you guys all soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jared. And we look forward Thank you. to seeing you guys and all your adventures. Thank and you. And playing dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work on it. All right. I'll post this. See you soon. Bye. Bye.